have a couple of minutes for questions for both speakers. Uh, and uh, Adrian's uh, presentation. Uh, Anti-Semitism was conspicuously absent from your uh, uh, talk. You didn't talk about persecution. You, you, you talked mostly about rational thinking and economic uh, needs. And in fact, uh, in the case of uh, Adrian's paper, it was the same. Zionism and anti-Semitism were conspicuously absent. Only when they are here, they kind of manipulate the Jewish Zionist uh, identity in order to get a little more. But otherwise, this is not a prime motivation to leave the country of origin. This is something to take into account. <laughs> In fact, my question is very similar, and uh, again, uh, it draws on, on the on, on Gur and, and Adrian, basically. Um, because James was in a, in a kind of different, more kind of qualitative, we are now talking of the dilemma between the, the, the quantitative macro view and the micro view. And in fact, often you find that the micro description of personal experiences says one thing, but then when you try to relate movements to certain external uh, political or socioeconomic indicators, you find something different. And as you noted, then the, the weight of socioeconomic seems to be much uh, higher than the, the, the weight of ideological. And, and I wanted to, since I also had uh, the idea of, of, of looking at the whole series, uh, it, you were very clear, but I would like you to reiterate uh, in your ranking of the determinants, uh, if you go a little bit uh, forward, in the early 1990s, uh, you have the double attack to the, in 1992 to the Israeli embassy and 1994 to AMIA, and AMIA is the most uh, dramatic and microscopic event, I think, in, in Argentinian Jewish history. And the response in terms of Aliyah is non or, or very minor. And then uh, before and after you have those huge peaks, and, and so, um, and of course, the, the biggest is the bankruptcy of the National Bank in 2002, and, and then you have the, the, the peak of, of all time. So if you would again rank the impact of, of the social economic crisis, uh, B, the ability of governments to, to reduce debt, which uh, in a sense stops Aliyah, uh, versus the impact of uh, violence, terrorism, anti-Semitism, uh, and the 1960s, what happened there, uh, to, to, to put things in, uh, in a kind of a comparative perspective. Yeah, I have a question to uh, Adrian too about... It's about um, what happened after uh, 1973. Uh, in terms of uh, Aliyah from uh, Argentina, because uh, you talk briefly about the attraction uh, factors of uh, Israel between 67 and 73, when it was uh, the peak of uh, the glory of Israel, and later on after 73, it's a uh, decline uh, in many aspects. So uh, what happened afterwards? <laughs> Before 73? No, after. After, 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 after okay. yeah. In terms of uh, Aliyah from uh, Argentina. I also have a question. I know that maybe it's a, it's a myth, but many Argentinians came to kibbutzim, um, to agriculture uh, settlements. Is, is, that, is it apparent in your study? Let me ask a question also. And I, I, you know, I think political exile is very different from, it's a very different phenomenon. I, I'm an outlier here in that regard. But, um, a minority, but I know for a fact, uh, especially after 73, as, as the, the political crisis increased between 74 and 75, a minority of Jewish leftist activists used Israel as a way to get out of the country. And so it's, yeah, I mean, it's basically, and they were not Zionists, and they 
left Israel when they could because they were, were uncomfortable with Israel in many ways. So it's another factor there because they could go to the embassy and get, get their papers and leave. And a lot of families forced their kids to get out of the country when people started getting disappearing. I don't, I don't know how large a percentage that is, but it was definitely another factor in this process, which has nothing to do with Zionism, it has to do with escaping state repression, nothing to do with being Jewish, but just the opportunity to go to Israel because that was the place you could quickly get a visa. Okay, thank you very much for the questions. About uh, Ranan's comment uh, and anti-Semitism, there is a degree of anti-Semitism in Argentina, like let's say normal, that is everywhere, is not politically activated, something, but in general the, Jew the Jewish Argentines are very, very well integrated into society and um, I did not mention that in 73, I could, there was, uh, in, in the middle of this revolutionary atmosphere, there was anti-Semitism everywhere. In particular, the, um, the economic minister of Perón was uh, Jewish, Jose Ver Helvard. Uh, no, by chance, he was, uh, he was himself the in my opinion, the, the strongest symbol of uh, social mobility because he arrived as a Polish young boy all, only with primary school. I don't know if he finished the primary school in Poland and he started selling stuff in the streets and he ended as a, an entrepreneur and a businessman and Ministry of Economy. So there was anti-Semitism but uh, it is not referred in 73 in the reports of Jewish agency emissaries. They are not talking about this. They are talking about just uh, people coming uh, here because uh, it is increasingly difficult to, for, for many young couples to have uh, the same living standard that their parents used to have. So. I talk about economic aspirations and not economic needs because they were okay, but it was difficult to continue the, in, in their perspective, and I think they were right. Uh, about the 90s, AMIA and the embassy, I completely agree. This is going to be part of the last chapter of my dissertation, and it is amazing because... I, <laughs> <laughs> I am responsible for all the mistakes, if there is something good, it's because of Ranan. And um, in the 90s, in the 90s, when you when you see a peak in the 90s that is much more smaller than the peaks we saw before or later in in 2000, the peak in the 90s in is 96. 96, it was the tequila crisis in Mexico, that is an advice, an, an introduction of what is going to happen in 2000. And then you have, in 96, a lot of people coming here, not because of the bombing of the embassy or the AMIA, because of economic crisis. But there is a period, uh, you, you ask me what happened later. In 78, I would say that I found three different profiles coming here all together. I, I am um, taking, I am borrowing an idea from Anita Shapira. She said that every immigration wave to Israel was remembered for some characteristic that maybe was not stati statistically correct, like middle class. Okay, not all of them were middle class, but it set the tone for that migration wave. And I tried to, to take the profiles that put the tone. And in 78, I have three profiles, because there are the leftists that they are trying to save their lives. And some of them did not have hopes here. Because of that, many of those returned and died. Many of them. Uh, but you, you can also have these people looking for mobility, social mobility. And at the same time, uh, you can find in 78 people that are from the lower echelons of the middle class, and they are having problems. They cannot um, 
afford living anymore because uh, there was also an economic program uh, that um, caused a lot of pro problems to the to the Argentinian middle class. And so in 78 I found the, the three profiles, and by the way, this collective protest about housing, you keep finding these kind of things in 78, at the same time that people are coming here escaping the the, the death that the dictatorship is going to, to give them. So you have everything at the same time. Someone that is here complaining because he has not uh, the mortgage to buy a home, and someone that is here and uh, feels really in the wrong place because uh, they want to fight for the revolution in Argentina. So everything at the same time. And about the kibbutz, uh, yes, there was a portion that went to the kibbutz. Uh, I, uh, I, I have a, um, a chapter where I deal with the dis dispersion of migrants, that was the policy, and uh, different trajectories of to return. I, I said something like different, uh, different roads to return. And there I, I have a, a section about Moshav Kohav. Moshav Kohav is still a Moshav. Now they are very successful producing, I don't know, maybe flowers, I think flowers. They are successful today, but in the 60s and 70s, they, they were in the newspapers because of return. I did not go to the archives of each kibbutz, but I think I, think I have their return. The, the people that left the kibbutz, uh, they were not returned registered as living a kibbutz. Maybe yes, at the archives of the kibbutz, but in statistics, because maybe they first left for a city or something, so I cannot, uh, I cannot say. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, we're going on a break now.